What's up everyone and welcome to part one of my Jupyter Notebooks tutorial series. And in this video I'm going to give a quick introduction to Jupyter Notebooks, talk about some of the basics, and show you how to do plotting. So to start, what Jupyter Notebooks are, well they're like Python, just like your normal text editor or IDE, but they have a lot of extra features and functionality. So they're geared towards people in the data science community and they really focus on making Python more interactive by displaying pl plots right in line with your code, um, displaying outputs, um, and also adding some really cool features called um, cell magics or line magics, which I'll do another video on that in the future. So not only is it Python, but they support a lot of other languages. For example, the name Jupyter comes from the combination of Julia, Python, and R. So not only does it support those languages, but a lot of other ones. So to get started, if you have Anaconda installed, then you already have Jupyter Notebooks and you're ready to go. If you don't have Anaconda and you want to use them, well, I would re really recommend that you use Anaconda. But if you, for some reason, choose not to, you can still install. Um, you'll just need to come to their homepage, click install, and they'll guide you through it. So let's get started. So to begin, open a command window and type Jupyter Notebook. And what this will do is begin a Jupyter Notebook server right in your command window. And make sure to keep that command window open at all times. If you close that, then your notebook will stop working. So once that begins, it'll open up your browser with a local host and will bring you to the Jupyter Notebook start page. And if you have an existing notebook, you can navigate to it and open it. And if not, you can come over here to the new dropdown and pick a new Python environment. So if you have Anaconda with multiple environments, you'll see them all listed here. But what I'm gonna do is select Conda root. And what this will do is open up a brand new Jupyter Notebook. So once inside our notebook, you can see that we have one cell right here. And what the cells are, are containers where you can put your code or you can even add HTML markdown. And for each one, you can run them individually. So for one cell, we could have a plot. For another cell, we can have some text explaining the plot. For another cell, we can do some analysis and so on and so on. So there are individual little containers. So let's start with markdown. So we'll come to, we'll click on the cell and we'll change it to a markdown cell. To add a heading, you just use a hashtag. Um, for one hashtag, that's the biggest heading. For two hashtags, we can make it a little bit smaller. So let's call this simple plotting example. We, below it, we can just add text. So we'll say, this is a plot of the sync function. So those dollar signs mean render it as LaTeX. And what LaTeX is, is a nice way to write equations. So for example, to do a LaTeX equation, we'll add the dollar signs. And the two dollar signs mean give it its own line and center it. So we'll say, say f of x equals fraction and the fraction will be sine x divided by x. So to run a cell, we just use shift return. So here you can see we have a heading, we have text with LaTeX rendered in line with the text, and we also added LaTeX as an equation right below. So now let's plot this thing. So we'll come down to our next cell and we're gonna use code. So in order to display a plot, what we need to do is use a cell magic or inline magic command. So all cell magics and inline magics begin either with one or two percent signs. So we're gonna do it percent mat plot lib inline. So when we run this cell, if we've got some plotting code in there, when we run it, we'll get a matplotlib plot right below the cell. So let's get started. Let's import numpy as np. Let's imp 
import matplotlib.py plot as plt. Let's just do pi equals np.py to make our lives easier. Let's create a x variable by using np.lin space and it'll go from minus 4 times pi to 4 times pi and we'll give it 1000 points. Now to plot we'll do plt.plot x np.sign x divided by x and then let's plt.show it. So now when we run this, we get a matplotlib right below the cell, right in line with our notebook. So congratulations, you've made your first plot. And we can actually refine this to make this a little bit nicer. So the first thing you might notice is that the plot is rendered as a rasterized image. So the quality is not as good. It's like a JPEG or a PNG. So what we want is a vector graphics rendering. So to do that, we can use another um, line magic called config. So the line magic is going to be inline backend dot figure underline format. And we're going to set that equal to SVG. So what that means is render this thing as an SVG graphics. That needs to be a period. So when we run this, now we get the vector graphics representation. So let's say we, instead of using numbers here, let's say we want the pi symbols because we made this thing go from minus four pi to positive four pi. So it would be nice if we had nice LaTeX rendered symbols here. So to do that, we use the xtix function. So we'll do plt xtix. And then what you'll do is you'll add a list of all the coordinates you want a label, and then you'll add a list of the labels. So let's say we want to go from minus four times pi and we'll copy this and we'll go to minus two, zero, to positive two, and all, oops, all the way up to four times pi. Then we add our next list which is going to be our labels. And in this case, we're going to use LaTeX to display them. So it'll be a string, dollar sign, dollar sign, and we'll do minus four pi. And let's copy this. So this will be two. This will be zero, two. And finally, here. So now when we run this, you'll see that we have the LaTeX labels. So minus four pi, minus two pi, and so on. So let's say we want to make this plot a little bit bigger. You know, there's all this white space right here. So maybe we want to make this thing a little bit wider. So in order to do that, we're going to use the PLT RC params. And what we do is give it this the string here. So figure dot fig fig size. And we'll set that to a tuple that is the width and height that we want. So let's do 11 by four. So now we get a plot that's a lot wider. We're filling up all this white space. So now let's do, um, you might notice that the, this text right here or the labels are kind of small. So we can increase the font size for these. So again, we'll do plt rc params. And this time it's update and the dictionary with um, font.size. And we will now feed it the size we want. So I'm going to do uh, 17. So now you can see that our labels are a lot bigger and more readable. And just to make the y-axis a little bit nicer, let's do the same thing. We'll do plt.y ticks. And let's just do zero and one. And let's also give it the LaTeX rendering of it so it looks nice. So we'll do dollar sign, dollar sign zero and dollar sign, dollar sign one. Oops. So yeah, it's not showing here, so 
just to make it show plt dot y limb and we'll go from uh, let's go minus 0 0.5 to 1.5 so yeah so now we have 0 and 1 displayed here and all our labels are rendered in LaTeX so now let's add a legend so to do that we need to give our our plot data a label so we come over to where we plot it which is right here and we add a comma and say label equals and typically if you're going to use a fraction you have to make your string a rich text string so you'll add the r and then your string so then we do dollar sign dollar sign and we can use the same equation from above so fraction and it'll be sine of x equals or sine of x divided by x and let's let's do the whole thing f of x equals sine x over x so now oops yeah so that's our label so in order to display the legend we need to do plt dot legend and this is something that i recommend using set the location equal to best and what this will do is It'll always place the legend in the best spot so it's not blocking or covering your your plots. So use that. And let's make the font size equal to 20. So here we go. We've got a nice plot <clears throat> with LaTeX um, x-axis labels with pi symbols. Also got nice LaTeX rendering for the y-axis. And then we've got a legend with the LaTeX equation right right in there so we can also make this thing a little bit fancier we can say plt.title and we can also add latex so well let's just say the sync function so here we go we can also give it a let's add a origin so a line at um from at y equals zero that just kind of um, shows the origin so to do that let's let's do plt ax h line you give it the y coordinate zero you can specify a color so i'm gonna say let's just do black and if you want, you can give it a line width. So LW equals one. So now you can see we've got a nice line right at the origin to kind of give us a clue where the origin is. So yeah, I think that is it for plotting. You can see that you can really customize and make your plot look really nice. And with the markdown, adding the explanation above it, it's really helpful. So if you're writing a paper, doing homework, and you wanna take your homework to the next level, this is a great way to do it. So um, in the next video, I'll maybe talk a little bit more about plotting and move into some other magic functions. And if you guys have any ideas or suggestions, leave me a comment. And if you like the video, give it a like. And if you guys want to come see more videos, hit the subscribe button. Thanks, guys. See ya.